Hey friends and family, welcome to Marcy Creates. This is Marcy. And today we have the Bargain Beads box Ocean Breeze. And we are going to continue with our color theory. And today we're gonna skip a few spaces and we're gonna use our blue green as our main color again. And we're gonna skip five spaces and we're gonna go one, two, three, well, four spaces. One, two, three, four is our red violet. So that's pretty much fuchsia. So we are going to make a project with some fuchsia and our beads. And I may throw in some black and white just to make it more fun. So uh, I'll be putting these away and I'll get us set up to get going on our analogous last spaces, the, the numbers, in, I mean, the colors in between. As you remember, on analogous, you can have up to five. So we have five here, the blue, green, and the red, violet are on the ends. So that's what we're gonna use today. And I think it's gonna turn out pretty cool. So stay tuned, I'm gonna get this uh, set up so that we can start making something. Again, I have no plan, and then we will get going. Okay, everyone, so I got all set up. And I also pulled some training material. So I pulled out some 22 gauge wire, some 26 gauge wire, and some 20 gauge wire. I also have some soft flex different colors. I don't know which color I want to use. Uh, since we're introducing this um, fuchsia color, I thought that this color, it's called pink tourmaline, might be nice to use. And uh, the other alternatives were black or the turquoise again, but I think on the last project we used turquoise. So I think we'll use the pink tourmaline uh, for this project. We are going to do another necklace, I think. Um, and I'm probably going to use some of this very trendy paperclip chain that you see all over instead of the bargain bead box chain. And then I want to focus on some of these starfish that we have in the silver. I thought would be nice. And I thought a starfish as our focal piece would be cool. So my first order of business, of course, is gonna be make a little bit of a focal piece. And I'm gonna use some 20 gauge wire for that. So we're gonna take the 20 gauge wire and I think I'll pull a generous amount. I haven't really a plan on what I wanna do yet with the focal piece. Um, I, well, I sort of have an idea but I want to make sure I have enough wire. Uh, I think this will be good. And just gonna hand warm this so that it cooperates. And I think I'm gonna use half. Let's see, let me just eyeball this. I'm gonna do like a, a little bit of a caged or some type of caged components, what I'm thinking. May or may not work, we'll see. We we're gonna use the bail making pliers. And let me get these edges flush. So I'm uh, coming to you late because we had a wonderful family phone call. Uh, we we're all over the country, my family and I. Uh, everywhere from Michigan to Indiana, California, Texas, uh, and then in California at San Francisco and LA, so the opposite ends of California. And we also have family, uh, I'm trying to think, Colorado, just all over. But my uncle turned 80 today. And so we wanted to all get on the phone and celebrate his birthday. That would be Uncle Pete. Happy birthday, Uncle Pete. So we had a family phone call. So I'm just making a loop. Um, and it was really fun. He said he got two cakes. <laughs> I think when you turn 80, you're allowed to have two cakes. And so we, we did a family like Zoom type call, which was great. Even though we're all over the United States, we were still able to coordinate and wish him a happy birthday. So I've got this component that I've made 
and I'm going to continue to, I think I'm going to, well, let's see. I think I'm going to make the same size loop, but I'm going to go this opposite way. This is a component that I've seen made by um, Sarah Lovecraft, and it's one that I go back to time and time again. because It's very versatile. You can do a lot with it. And basically, it's this shape, and then you can take something round. I'm just going to go ahead and take the spool. I've got a, almost an empty one here. And I'm just going to bend it right on the spool so that it's curved, just like that. See that? And then I thought it would be really fun to maybe um, wire wrap this, but I wanted to make one um, to kind of go over it as well, but maybe a little fancier. We'll see. I've done this little cage technique before, and uh, you can play around with the shapes, which is kind of nice. And you can come up with some pretty cool little um, pieces. So for this one, I think I'm going to go with some smaller loops. And I'm going to mimic what I did with that one. So I'm just making a loop like that with my pliers. And my next set of pliers are on this end. And like I said, this is a nice versatile little thing. And I may put this on the top. I don't know yet. Because I'm thinking now, maybe I'll do another loop. We'll make, uh, go the opposite way. So we've got that. We're going to put there. Oop. Make sure you got it situated right. Go this way. And don't worry if they're twisted. You can... This 20 gauge wire is pretty figure friendly, as they say. <laughs> and then I might just make a loop in the center here. Maybe I'll do a small loop. Try to center it. Now you have a little Y, little Y thing. So we may do that. Hang our star here, and then um, I might make this a little bit more bent. My thought was to attach the wires, put the star down here, and maybe do some beads here. But it might look better if we do this guy. Let's see. Hmm. Maybe we'll wire wrap this way and we'll attach with some jump rings. I think I like that. That'll add some color. I'm thinking though with, with we should do threes. So well that's kind of one, two, three, isn't it? Let's add our starfish and see what he looks like on here. And I'm just bending this just a little. He's already got a jump ring on him, so I'm going to leave that on. We 
just bend those back. As you can see, this wire is very pliable. So that would be our focal bead. I think, I think we need a smaller jump ring though. So rather than untwist that all, let's do a smaller. I like the jump. I like that that came with a jump ring, but I think it's too big. Our wire is very delicate, so let's take this off. And we'll do a smaller jump ring. I'm kind of thinking of you know like the nets you know and um, on boats, that kind of idea. It'd be cool if we had some anchors, but I, I don't have any anchor anchor beads. I think I'm going to use a oval jump ring. I think I've mentioned before I like these because the um, the things that you hang from them hang very nicely. We'll add him. And let your imagination go wild with the with the wire. Once you start making pieces and figure out how you want to connect them, you could do a whole necklace that way if you wanted. Designer's choice. As I always say, so that looks cool. So then maybe we will wire wrap some beads on here. Let's see what we wanna add. I think maybe one of our really cool black and white beads will introduce our fuchsia. There's a little bicone right there. Let me dump these out. You can see what we've got. Yeah, a little dub bicone. And maybe we'll throw in a couple of little sea beads to pick up the uh, the aqua. So we're going to take our 26 gauge wire. I don't have much left. I did have, I do have some on order and um, this is super fine. You can see it's very thin. It's great for wire wrapping and I'm going to pull a big long piece if I can keep it from now the, the thinner that it is, the easier it is to kink it up too. So you got to be mindful of that, but we're going to, we're gonna rush forward here and I'm just pulling a big long length. So a bunch, bunch of wire, a whole mess, whole mess of wire. Let's put this guy over here for right now. Maybe we'll put some little bead caps on that center bead. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna wire wrap um, and attach this. Let's start over here. We're going to attach this to our component that we made. It takes a second to just get it set up and I'm starting with the lower, the smaller piece just so I can get in and out of here relatively easy. And this, this is great with your finger. You can do this with your fingers because it's such a small gauge. Um, I am gonna come in here with these wonderful Xyron pliers and just smish those together a little bit. Hope you can see that. We're just pushing this through our loop. I think I'm gonna do like three, maybe four wraps. And then we're going to use this wire for some extra texture as well. And I see a lot of people do this technique. This is nothing that, this is nothing that I came up with. A lot of people use this technique um, and I really like it. It's very fun and you can add a lot of 
beads to your focal piece and then it adds a lot of interest and texture as well. So once you have that, you're going to, now what's nice about this is you've got this little space right here between these. You can move this a little bit if you want to, and then you can make another little loop. And I'm gonna straighten these up. See now they're all straight. Then you can start stringing your beads. So I think what we'll do here is we'll grab a little blue seed bead and maybe we'll space them in between everything else. So we're gonna just zip line him down. Oh, where'd he go? There he is. Hang on, I'm off camera. I know that I'm off camera, but I'm trying to find the bead. <laughs> He's, they're tiny. Now, these are number 11 seed beads. You could do number six beads if you had them in that color. They're just gonna be bigger, so you got a lot for the size. Now, where did this guy go? There he is. And see how that wire wants to kink up on me? Just take your time. So I'm just gonna hand warm this really quick, just to get that little kink out of there. All right, and then I'm gonna take a bicone Those are really pretty. The seed bead. And let's see how much room that takes up. So we're gonna be coming down here with this. We're basically gonna follow the curve of this. So we're down here like this. And then let's add our I think if we add him and the bead caps, we'll have plenty. So let's add the bead cap. I made this long because I'm thinking I'm gonna wire wrap around all these beads when I get done. Um, that's not something you have to do. It's just something I think I wanna do on this. Our black and white bead. It is gonna tangle on you and get kind of twisted up. Just take your time. You'll get a feel for it after a little while. Okay, that guy kinked up. No worries. All right, now, I like that. I think that's really pretty. So we'll add a blue bead and, oh, we gotta do our other bead cap. Going the other way, a blue bead, our bicone bead. Whoops, come here, mister. I love the sparkle on those bicones. And another, and another one, and another one. Let's see. There we go. All right. Now you're gonna play with this a little. And that's what's nice about the 26 gauge wire is it's very, easy to work with. I'm going to pull this out a little bit and the reason why is it's going to make it much easier for me to wrap on this side. Make sure your seed bead stays where he and this is going to move but we're going to we're going to anchor it so don't worry about that right now you just want to make some nice wraps and we're going to come through here another wrap through here I think we did five on that side. 
Okay. Let's just straighten those up. We can move our component back, a little piece back there. So now you have this. Okay. And now, um, actually, I am going to move these back out because we're going to wire wrap around these. So we're going to go around our bike home. And then around that little seed bead, around our black bead, and just push them where you want them as you're wrapping. Seed bead, bicone. Now, you could stop here. Uh, I am going to just gently adjust a few things, but I think I want kind of a crisscross look. So we're going to go back through and I've seen this done super neat and I've seen it done super messy and it is completely up to you. And then if you want to go back through it, you can. You can use your fingers to move everything where you want it. I think I'm going to stop there for the sake of time and then push these guys back in here. And now you have like a wire wrapped. It's kind of got a cool little texture to it. You got your blue beads and your pink beads. And then the other thing you want to think about, um, just like with earrings, is make sure you cut on the inside of your component so that um, it doesn't poke, the wire doesn't poke anybody. And we'll just push that in. Okay, and then our other little piece, just a tiny little piece over here. That's the one we started with. Sometimes the trick is just to get the right angle. There we go. Push him in. And then just feel it with your fingers and make sure nothing's sticking out. All right, so now we have this component and this component. And I think I'm going to attach, you could do wire here, or you could attach with um, jump rings. And for the sake of time, I'm going to do some oval jump rings. So I'm going to pull two of those out. Love these oval jump rings. I think I got these at um, Hobby Lobby. So now I'm going to hook this onto this piece. And you can do many, many different variations of this. I mean, the sky's the limit. It's your imagination that stops you. I've seen people do very elaborate things. Um, and they turn out really pretty. And it's a way to add, you know, your own touch to a piece. Um, if you already have a focal in mind, that's, that's great too. Like we used that starfish in our last project. That was perfect, but you can always, with wire and beads, make your own, which I like. I like doing that. Another person I love to watch for wire is uh, Gem Hawks. Her and Sarah Lovecraft, I love 
watching them dewire stuff. So I just try to learn from them and then make it my own. And that's, that's how you kind of come up with your own style. Uh, and that's why it's cool to like combine and learn two new techniques and then see what you can do with them from a jumping off point. So now we have this really pretty component and you could wrap more beads around this piece if you wanted. Um, you could um, make this loop and then string beads and then make those loops. I may do that at some point, not, not today, but um, this is our, gonna be our focal piece for our necklace. And I think that's gonna be super cute. Um, and then we'll use our pink tourmaline wire. And let me pull out a good length. We're also gonna use some paperclip chain. So we're not gonna do a huge uh, amount of this. But I do want some of this color to show since we're, use, we're adding this color to the bargain bead box. Let me pull another one. So we have both sides the same. And as you know by now, I love this. I love this soft flex wire. This one is the medium in pink tourmaline. And I do have some of their crimps out. And guess what? It's time to crimp. <laughs> so, um, and I think this aqua color looks so pretty with these, with this um, fuchsia. I really like it. So we'll come in here and we'll add a wonderful crimp bleed from the Softflex company. Don't use inferior crimp beads. We know what those do. <laughs> they crumble, which we don't want. Okay, and now I'm gonna come in with my magical little crimpers. Make sure those aren't crossing. They want to cross, boy. And the trick, like I said before, and I'm still practicing myself, is make sure that this is centered in there very nicely and you press down, you're gonna have like what they call a little ravioli. And then you wanna put it sideways, make sure it's centered again. Press down and just gently go all the way around, squeezing and turning. And then you have your little your little bead looking crimp. Let's see if I can do the other side just as well. It seems like I do one good side and then the other side is like, eh. Okay. So, maybe we should do our other side also while we're at it. Oh, gotta add the crimp bead. I do love this fuchsia and the aqua together. It's really pretty. We're gonna add some white too. There's a lot of white in this bargain bead box. We really haven't taken advantage of that yet. So we're gonna do that today. But I think these two colors plus that white will be very pretty. And little pops of black. Not a lot of black, but a little little pops here and there. Okay. I just want to eyeball my loops and make sure they look similar. I think they do. Boy, those want to cross. There we go. Let me 
make sure that's centered. I'm checking both sides. little ravioli. Make sure that's centered. And now we're gonna gently turn and squeeze. Yay! That one looks good. Eureka! Okay. So we've got a pretty wire, we've got a beautiful component. We've got a couple of bead caps here we might use. And um, I don't know why I have an odd number of bead caps. I do want to use these starfish. Let's see, let's use some of these big pink to go with the um, bead caps. I want to use some of these lava beads too. We haven't used those yet. We will certainly grab a couple more bicones and then we have these really pretty flowers or we could also do um these flowers little bell flowers kind of like the bell flowers i think we're gonna go with and it's also kind of crystal clear here's some more bicones more bell flowers Okay, then we'll do some aqua. I think it'd be fun to do some some black seed beads too. Just pull these white ones out. And I do want to use, let's see, we use these white beads in the other project. So maybe we'll do some of these white bicones. We'll use more white. Also, I like these. I want to use a few of these. All right, so let's start stringing. Yay, stringing, my favorite part. So I think right away we will put uh, a couple of starfish. Well, let's do a bicone. A bicone. Let's do a blue bead. A black bead. And a blue bead. Oops, blue. Then we'll add our starfish. And I'm going to Use the point down. That's real cute. This can be a little bit daintier than what we've made before. Let's add a white bicone. And I think I want to do another blue. black can't find the hole there we go another yeah, blue it's easier to be down on your mat and do this I don't know why I was hanging on to it with my finger that's silly technique a technique helpful technique for you okay that looks very cute uh, let's see, let's do, we're not ready for our big beads yet. Let's do a bellflower. And I'm going to have the big part facing in to kind of make a little bead cap for our lava bead. We'll put one on the opposite way. This, of course, what I'm doing now, as you know by now, is designer's choice. I really like this blue and black little striped action. And again, with seed beads, you can add a graphic element 
Um, say you only have one of these Z beads, you can still mimic it with your, you could do white and black instead of the blue and black, but I think you get the idea. Let's see if these black beads are gonna cooperate. There we go. Very cute. And we'll do, let's do another. Actually, I want to add some of these white bicones, some more of those. Well, that's fun. Let's do our blue, black, and blue pattern again. Now we'll do a bellflower and one of these white. I don't know what those are. Kind of a veined agate, it looks like. Cute. Now maybe up here we'll add our Z bead. I don't have any more um, bead caps, but I'm going to put a silver spacer. Let's do our blue, black, blue again. Add another starfish. Cute. Another white bicone. You guessed it, blue, black, blue. Hmm. So like I said, I don't want to go too high with this because we're going to add chain. So I think I'm going to stop here. We'll do the other side. I'm going to do that off camera. And then we'll talk about attaching our, oh, you know what? We didn't do our, our big beads. We've got to do those. Silly me. So I think we'll do a white bicone. Actually, that might look nice next to the chain because the chain is, is not as dainty. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, I like that. I'm gonna add one more bicone. Okay, so let me string the other side and then we'll attach the, the um, paperclip chain. And I think we will use the toggles that came in the box. Okay, so I have both of these strung, and I'm going to pick out some, a length of chain I think I want to add to the back of this. And I think I want to add, I do want some of this pretty wire to show from Softflex. Uh, so, uh, I like it down here, but I do want some showing up here. We don't need a ton showing, but I do want enough showing that... Um, you know that that's intentional. So I think if we maybe do about a length like this and I add some chain, I don't have my bead board out with the, I'm gonna guesstimate here. I think that's a good length. So let's see. Oh, that will open. That's good. I don't have to cut that. Some of these are already soldered shut and you can't open them. But see, this has got a spot where you can just open it like a jump ring. So that's awesome. So now we'll just pull that link out. We maybe could use that later. And 
on, let's... Grab a piece of wire here. We're just gonna... String both of these on. So I know where to take this off. I think that's there. Just double check it. Nope. That's right. So I'm going to take this one off. I do like this paperclip chain. I don't know if you've ever used it or not, but it is everywhere. If you look on in catalogs and magazines. Let me just make sure I got these the right length. Looks good to me. All right, put this to the side and we're going to attach our beading wire to our links here. So I've got a couple of more crimp tubes. We'll get out our magical crimp pliers. Let's start with this side. And I think I wanted about that much of the wire to show. Let's make sure this is centered. Little raviolis. They really do look like ravioli. <laughs> Whoever came up with that. I think Somebody at Softlex came up with that. It's perfect. I'll cut this guy. Save the scraps though, because you can use them for things. And we've got our chain on this side. So now this side, let me make sure. We want to make them as even as possible. So this is going to take a minute because you want to definitely have these as even as possible. And also you want your loops to kind of match. So this part, you're gonna take your time with. I need to come down a little. This is gonna take you a minute, just be patient. You don't wanna to have to restring it. I mean, if you have to, you have to, but um, that's the only kind of tricky thing when you're switching out um, beading uh, paraphernalia wire uh, and you're attaching. You want things to be even. Think. 
looks pretty good. That'll do it. Everybody holding your breath? <laughs> this is probably the trickiest part of the whole necklace. <laughs> but like I said, if it's not, if it doesn't work, you can do it over. Let me make sure that's centered. It's not going to be exact, but you know what? That's part of making handmade things. You know, this, a machine didn't make this. You did. So it's off by a tiny bit. I really wouldn't sweat it, especially like with earrings, because they're on opposite ears. And what's between your ears? Your face. Nobody's going to be sitting there with a measuring stick going up. Oh, you're off by a quarter inch or I mean, obviously you want them to look as close as possible, you know, but you don't have to be perfect. Okay. So now we're going to attach our toggle clasps. We're going to keep these. There's little tricks you can do with little pieces like this that I've learned from the Softflex uh, folks. Um, which I won't get into today, but I do want to pass on some of their knowledge, but you can also check out their YouTube and their Facebook because they have, they're the experts with the soft flex. I'm still learning. Um, and plus they're just super nice people and they're a lot of fun to watch. And, um, I just enjoy watching their videos and they do some live Facebook things, which are super fun. Uh, so do check them out. Oh, we're not going to need crimp beads. We're going to need um, jump rings to attach these. So let's get some of those out. These are 18 gauge. I think they're a nice weight for a nice heavy chain and a big toggle like that. I like the 18 gauge um, jump rings. Just a little tip for me to you. If you, any of you are doing rain dances for us, I appreciate it. Uh, we seem to get teased with some rain near us and then we don't get any. So prayers, rain dances, whatever you'd like to send our way in Texas, we would appreciate it. <laughs> uh, my uncle is in the upper peninsula of Michigan. He was telling me it's 63 degrees today. Boy, was I jealous. I would like, I sleep great in 60 degree weather. I don't know about you, but that's a great temperature to sleep in. All right. So now we have our toggle clasp. And he just slides in like that. Oops. And then there you go. Now, one thing that I thought I would like to do is uh, this little guy down here looks lonely. And I think I'm going to make a couple of dangles to hang on either side of him real quick. And um, I think I'm going to use some wire some more of this 16 gauge wire. A couple of pieces, just real quick. This is what I had left over from wire wrapping it earlier. 
and it'll also mimic the very fine wire we have there. So I was just gonna take a seed bead hope this will work. I was going to anchor him down here. Let's see if these will both fit. May or may not work, but we'll see. Okay, so I've made a little guy like that and then let's see if it fits through this check bead yay so now I'm just gonna make a messy little loop use this guy and I'm using both wires Let me move this guy over so I'm going to attach it on either side of this starfish. There we go. And then I'm just going to grab and wrap. We don't need all that wire, so we'll cut some of it off. Oops, come back here. I'm trying to escape. No, 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 we're not done with you. All right, I'm gonna tuck those wires in. Yeah, I think it needed some color down there. We're gonna add one more. So again, we're gonna add our black seed bead. It just looked like it was needing, it looked lonely. That little starfish down there looked lonely. So, you know, we don't want our beads to be lonely. So I'm, I'm just squeezing this so it's narrow as possible so it'll fit through that bicone. Just like that. And the holes in the bead will help squeeze it too, but you gotta get the um, wire through there. This won't work for every bead, obviously, because not every bead is a big enough hole to fit two little, but this is the 26 gauge, which is super fine. I think uh, some people use 28 gauge. I've never used 28 gauge. I need to play with that. I have not used it ever. Something new to play with. I'll have to order some. And then we want to add our pretty bellflower. Make another loop. Pull that down. We're going to go on the other side of this. Starfish. Hang on to that and wrap it. And I'm using both wires. It makes kind of a nifty, almost looks like a bead cap. I like the texture. Of course, as we all know by now, I like a messy wrap, so that fits right in. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna tuck these in.
All right. So cute. Let me turn that around. That turned out very cute. Um, let me put it on some white paper. I think it'll show up nicer. So we've got our, our soft flex wire and boy, that does not want to cooperate. <laughs> There's our chain and our really pretty, I love the, the black and the teal turquoise, uh, little dangles. Probably could have added some turquoise down there, but that's okay. Oh, this guy's turned around. There we go. Now our focal's facing the right way. We've got our beautiful soft flex wire showing and that pretty color. Uh, pink tourmaline. And starfish, Z beads, bargain bead box stuff, some check glass. We made a component. We did a lot. I'm going to zoom in so you can see this a little better. I didn't realize I was so far out, but I want you to see what I'm doing. So there is our Tuesday, our tutorial Tuesday necklace, wire wrapping, chain, soft flex, black and white, fuchsia added to our bead box. And we used the white beads from the bead box and the starfish. Pretty cool. So, thanks for joining me. So much fun to play with these colors. And we still have quite a bit. Uh, I think next time we'll do a chunky monkey necklace. And what do I mean by that? We have all these big beads. And we're just going to string the heck out of those and make something colorful and fun and kind of chunky. I think that's what we'll do next time. So stay tuned for that since we're still playing with our bargain bead box. And uh, this time, maybe we'll add a different color. I'll have to think about what color. But um, remember, this was using our analogous color scheme. The blue, green, and the red, violet were on the ends of it. One, two, three, four, five. And then we added some graphic elements as well which I think it gives it a really cool look. So thanks for hanging in there and watching this with me. I know this was a long one and it is late, uh, but you know, you gotta celebrate those milestones in the family. And um, I definitely wanted to wish my Uncle Pete a happy 80th. I hope he has many, many more. And I hope you all do too. Hope you're safe and cozy wherever you are and that you're having a wonderful day, evening, morning, whenever it is that you watch this. Thank you so much for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, I'd love to have you. Do check out our Facebook group, uh, Marcy Creates. Got some very nice folks on there. Uh, we're posting pictures of things. We'd love to see your work. I'd love to see, you know, what you come up with from the things that I'm showing you. And if not, uh, do follow me on Pinterest under Marcy Creates, one word, and then Studio. I have lots of cool color ideas. I've been pinning all kinds of inspirational stuff. If you're stuck and you don't know where to start, it's a great place to look to just to get inspired. Thanks again for watching. I appreciate all of you very much. I want you to have a wonderful day, evening, again, morning. Take care of yourselves and your families. Let's pray for some world peace as always. And thank you. And I will see you on the next video.